so from what I can remember of this game, it's not a whole, whole of a lot. The uh, I've put the extra markers that I could figure out locations for for the inactivity for the Confederates. Um, I think it's all of them. I just have some extra markers. I don't remember that that was the case. Uh, the Union goal is largely, I mean, yes, there's, I can look at the points and figure that out. Hey, I want to cut this railway station and this one and this one, you know. <laughs> um, those are where the big points lie. But in terms of to get to where you um, need to be as quickly as you need to be there, the Union goal is largely to get their base supply point out of here. Um, initially, that's going to be on uh, the Rappahannock and try to trace from down there. And most of the force is going to want to move in that direction. I might use a force down here on this rail line. Um, I can't trace supply from it, but I can disrupt it a little bit. And there might be some reasons for doing that, but that's not going to be where my, my major emphasis is. My emphasis is going to be cutting through the wilderness, getting down. And now that brown crap is broken terrain. And let's take a look at the terrain effect chart. Okay, broken doesn't help the defender at all, so that's good. It's just more expensive to move through. And control and movement along the roads, trying to bypass the river lines and streams, which give a defensive bonus. These are the things I want to do. Now, this is pretty easy at you know, if the Confederates are trying to stop. But the Confederates are going to be pushing back and throwing temporary lines in my way to slow me down each time. And then I have to shift somewhere. Uh, obviously, I want to try to keep close to my supply center, but that may end up being a difficult thing to do. Uh, the initial scenario wants you to get around Spotsylvania or so, and that's pretty good. Um, Let's see, what do we have? 15 hexes for our line, one, two, three. So this is about where my supply can hit, sort of a circle running across there. Now I can't run it across the river without a bridge, um, but if I can drop down into this area and keep the Confederates from interfering back there, I can get a supply line back there. Now, if the Confederates do interfere back there, what can I do? Well, I can run real fast to get over here um, and throw my supply lines all, all the way down on the Pamunkey River. So they can't really put too much of an effort to disrupting my supply because in doing so, I might end up behind them. And that's the problem I had in the last game that I played. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> and this is, uh, in a lot of ways, a very different game from others that I've looked at. Yes, it has a hex and counter situation, but it also has a lot going on that I find a little weird. So we don't play the administrative cycle. We will be hitting the first action cycle. I want to make sure there aren't any special rules. As those have passed my brain already. Mainly having to do with initiative. Confederates get a bonus on the first attack. Union has the initiative on the first action uh, phase of the game which means I get to pick one Union commander, that's what I thought it was, and move him without having to worry about uh, the Confederates. And <sighs> These Cav are nice choices in terms of being able to move quickly. Unfortunately, they're not gonna be the things that can bust through. And I feel like I'm gonna need to get someone like Hancock uh, marching down early. There's 
There's not a whole hell of a lot there, so I can probably get through there. So I think that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to activate Hancock first. Let me grab some dice so that I can actually play. Since it's an infantry unit, I get one die. Hancock gives me plus four movement points. This better be a Union unit. <laughs> And my goal is to bypass the Confederate positions and get as much distance as I can. I don't necessarily want to fight a big battle. So let's see what we can do. And we want to get ourselves somewhere in this realm here so that we can uh, take, what is this, Salem Church. All right, let's see what we got. Ugh, five movement points. That's not going to do it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Right, so the roads cost me one. There's no special administrative movement or anything like that. One, two, three, four, five. I've crossed the river. I'm finished. And now let's make sure we're right about how things work. I think we jumped into the correct place, the action cycle. Yep. Now we roll for initiative because that's what we're doing from now on. The Confederates have the initiative. <sighs> what they kind of want to do is try to block the Union behind here as much as possible. Because if I can force the Union to have to go around, that's a lot of movement and a lot of expense. Uh, on the other hand, though, they can trace supply off here, and they can try to cut around me as long as they're near their rail line. And that is one of the uh, one of the things I have to contend with. It's hard for me to give up the spaces that I'm entrenched in because they help prevent. Huh. Sturt should probably have a Confederate strength point under him. I would think. <laughs> uh, now I gotta make sure I got them in the right place. Even though the Union wanted to move first, I'm having trouble figuring out if the Confederates actually want to move first. The Union was, you know, maybe a little out of, uh, out of sorts, but I've crossed this river at this point. I don't know how much further that I can get safely. Uh, Confederates could position themselves on the creek there. But here, here's the thing. If, uh, if I move my biggest force, which is Ewell, he's probably going to get, you know, like a seven movement. Now I could force march, but one, two, three, four, five, six. But by doing that, then I open up a path here which is of some danger, you know? And this is something that I think recurs through this game, which is, and my zoom is not fading out to its furthest uh, distance, unfortunately, um, which is that the, um, the union is kind of continually able to bypass or make a different choice of a route to take if their route starts getting blocked. Another factor in my hands as the Confederates is I want to be able to make an attack. Now, I could run out and attack Wilson here. He's pretty weak. Um, and then I'd get that plus one attack bonus against him. But he's Cav, he could just run away and would probably be fine due to that. Um, so I think I'm going to punt to the Union again. Make them commit themselves to where they're going. That is another facet to this game, which is that you're constantly trying to get your opponent... Uh, yeah, my zoom is just not working properly. Um, to commit themselves to a movement in a location before you take your own action. So quite often you're going to delay. Why did the Union grab first? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe they should have forced a Confederate move to begin. I think the same thing as we saw before. I think the Union's going to pick Sedgwick. 
Roll off four eight movement points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To the same space as Wilson is here. And you can see the similarity to, say, uh, the Civil War game in terms of, hey, look, I get to roll, but there's a difference. It's not even. It's whoever gets the initiative gets to go. The Union gets the initiative this time. Question, of course, is do I want to push Wilson down further? Uh, or do I want the Confederates to get a go? I'm going to grab the initiative here and roll Wilson, who's at two dice plus five, if, if I'm right. Let's see. Yeah. And with Force March, I would get more movement points, be able to dig deeper, but at some chance uh, of casualty. I never liked Force Marching. In any games, I don't know. Ten, five. Am I in range of supplies? I got one more movement point. I'm going to push down here. Now that starts to open something interesting up where someone like Fitz Lee here might want to attack. And I can't run away from that. Another initiative check. I never quite feel like I know what I'm doing. The Union gets the next initiative. Now, I've moved a lot of my folks. Um, I don't have... I have Greg here. Might want to get him across as well. He could get me. What does the city do for me? <laughs> On the terrain map. Not much. <laughs> he could get me someplace I kind of want to go. Yeah, let's try moving Greg. I don't have to take it, obviously, but 6, 11. Okay, Fords, I think, cost an extra movement point. But maybe I'm mistaken. Nope, no effect. G during rain, they can't cross my major my rivers. So I've got 11 movement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ugh, not really where I want to be. But what the hell. Spotsylvania Courthouse area sounds like a good thing. It's getting me around that curve there. Another roll. All right. Uh, Confederates want to force the Union to take their last move, basically. I don't... Everybody wants the Union to go. So we're going to force Warren to go. And I think the Union's making a mistake by trying to go early here. I think the Confederates are making the wiser move. Nine. I don't want to face all this. So, one, two, three, four, five. I get blocked there. We'll send everybody down the same way. I can keep rolling initiative, but it's not really important. Only the Confederates have pieces left. And at this point, the Confederates have to decide, first of all, whether they want to make an attack, which the answer is yes. But where, when, how is the major question. <laughs> I could slip around and hit Sedgwick here, but then we don't know if somebody like Hill is going to be able to get far enough to block things. Those cav aren't terribly 
threatening. So how much do I want to get them out of my way? You know, these, these are the kind of decisions that I find very, very difficult in this game to make. It's highly unlikely that I'm going to be able to get an attack in with one of my infantry forces unless I force march, and then it's going to be across a river or something, or a creek, which I don't really want to do. Uh, Sedgwick back here can still slip around this way, and that might be advantageous to him. The road networks are really, really important in this game. Um, so I'm probably going to leave Ewell here. <laughs> However, the decision to send everything down this way more or less makes it me free to move these guys. Now, there's one exception. Burnside's is still available back here, and he could come marching down and doing his own thing. So that's something I have to consider. <sighs> However... Longstreet might be able to, might end up someplace where he can interfere a little bit. And my only other force is Hill, who has the majority of my troops. I mean, Hill and Ewell are my largest forces that I can operate with here. So that's really kind of what I got to play with. Um, do I want to launch my attack before I see what I do or not is the question. And I think that I do want, I'm just checking, my Kev don't have a lot of strength points, which is not surprising. I'm trying to figure out, does it make a difference? And with Greg hiding behind this stream here, I'm probably not gonna hit him. So I'm probably gonna hit Wilson here. So uh, let's see where our infantry ends up first, because it's not gonna get far enough to do anything. So we'll move Hill. And then we'll think a bit based on where he gets to. And we don't force march, which is probably dumb, but... Get ourselves here. Which just isn't very far. <laughs> We're hoping to cut down a little further. Hmm. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm going to launch that attack. Uh, that's going to be out of here. I don't like my movement while I can stay where I am. That's one interesting aspect. I got 15 movement points. All right. So, does angle of attack matter much? Not enough to make a difference. Not enough to go up there. So I'm going to go two movement points. my breast works all right now to move into here i'm allowed to use the road so that's let's get the two out there so that's one two three to make the attack and now we compare our strengths and it should be one to one which shouldn't provide any bonus to me uh, other modifiers, the attacker. No supporting leaders. I could use the Confet General lead bonus. This is prob this might be my only attack this moment. Otherwise, I'd be attacking this thing at one to two, which is a minus one. I'd be an even on that. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I really don't know. By the way, the interesting thing is your, it's your combat value that's mo that's uh, determines how many casualties you take, not your total manpower. Uh, I get the plus one for the first Confederate attack. A plus one total, I don't feel like that's all that much. I'm going to throw my General Lee bonus in. Probably means I don't make the second attack. I get plus two, seven. I'm at plus three, and the defender gets hit with a defender retreat because they're small, and I get a defender advance. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, we both get a D, which is disorganized and fatigued. Not defender. Okay. Disorganized. 
Wilson's already fatigued. The fact that Fitz Lee's fatigued means I wouldn't get a second attack in any way. And what did we say? It's a retreat, which I believe is two hexes away. Uh, going through a zone of control is bad. Let me look at restrictions on retreat because I'd probably rather retreat that way towards my supply center. No requirements to move over cheapest terrain. There's not a zone of control here because his force is too small. So I can do this if I wish. And I think I do because that puts me in clear terrain, which is advantageous for the Union for all combat. The Confederates, do they want to advance? They want to move more is what they want. Um, advancing into here doesn't really guarantee us anything particularly good, so we'll stick here. That disorganized marker means, one, we can't force march. And this is why you don't want to force march, because you get disorganized and you're fatigued, so you don't recover from that disorganization in this action cycle. Uh, I guess I'm going to move Hampton next. See how far he gets. Oh, he gets to go very, very far. Maybe I want to go pick some more on him if I've got enough. I do not. I think I want to position myself in the way here. Right. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Ten to one is a lot. Uh, of course, I can retreat. Cost him movement points. Seems like an idea. Thirteen, fourteen, and we fatigue there. And now I've got a couple more. I've got Stuart up here, or long, yeah, Stuart up here, who isn't doing me a whole hell of a lot of good right now. Uh, I've got Yule, who I do not want to move. Well, Sedgwick's there particularly. And I've got Longstreet, who isn't really strong enough to do much of anything against anyone. I move him up here, he doesn't join that fort. I think I'm going to call it there. And since Longstreet didn't activate, for what good this does, he will drop a Breastworks counter into play. Now granted, I gave counters up during the recovery phase. Nobody else didn't move who could have. So we unflip everyone. Who's flipped? Was this wise? Damned if I know. I never know until I've played it once. Kind of like... Uh, I like Korean War. I never know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, General Lee recovers. And we're going to be in the second action cycle phase. The second action cycle opens up. Burnside's available now. And we roll some more dice. The Union have the advantage this time. Uh, I think they feel like the Confederates are giving them something in terms of uh, passing the advantage before. I think we still want to go early. I kind of want to blow through Hampton here. Now, one argument would be, hey, Warren's right here and can charge right through. But it makes more sense to use Hancock He's close enough, he can probably make it across. And he'll get supporting combat value from uh, Warren. Yeah, it's not going to matter because the Cavs just going to run away. But that's what we're going to try. And we don't... Uh, I don't think we need to force March again. We're, 
you know, making lots of errors here. So, all right, five movement points. That puts us to one in the Pucci map. Uh, the road goes across there, so it's just one more. We were at five. One plus one plus two for the attack. Well, no. One for the move. Now the cav gets to retreat. It doesn't get to retreat when the attack is made. It's obvious what we're intending to do here. So, the cav marker goes fatigued and disorganized without any harm. We're not going to be able to hold this position against those odds. Uh, two movement points are expended from Hancock. And the Cav takes an additional hit on a six. It does not. Now it gets to route, which is a four hex retreat. Now, here's where you gotta be real careful is figuring out where the hell you wanna retreat to. One. Two, three, four. We want to be on the other side of river lines for the most part. Okay, Hancock's only got two more movement points, that means. So we'll push him down and flip him over, and we're on to another initiative. Spirits win the initiative this time, and the question is, what do they want to do? They definitely don't want to give the Union more power, because if the Union keeps getting to go, they're going to be able to streak down into here and basically protect this line running here so that their supplies are good. And then I've got to fall back. So, Hill seems like a good choice to move. Now the problem with Hill is, if I move to here, which is really kind of a blocking move, um, the Union's going to be able to hit him with supporting strength and such now. However, I think it's the best that I can do is to kind of get in the way up here. Conceivably, I could just place there. Uh, you will still doing something as long as Sedgwick and Burnside are back here. I'd rather not activate them. So yeah, hell it is. Uh, do I need to force march? One, two, three, four, five, no. I'm not going to get to go any further than that unless I have a really good roll and I can run around. Uh, there's no... I can't see the river line there. It looks like it ends. It's easier to see with the camera than with my eyes. It looks like it ends on this hex, which means I'm not going to have the river protection that I want. <sighs> Shit. Yeah, but I need to block. All right, ten movement. One, two, three, four. Woods cost six. So one, two, three, four. I could go down to here for the ten. Instead, one, two, three, four, five. That leaves me five left. Now I could attack Hancock. I'd be fighting in the woods. He's strength 11, I'm strength nine. I believe, I know I said, I believe the ratio is rounded in favor of the defender in this. Uh, which means I'd fall back to a one to two, which would give me a minus one. I could cancel that out with a Lee bonus. Uh, or I can leave it on the Union to make the attack. Fortunately for the Confederates, the Union got the initiative and they're gonna force the Confederates to go first because, you know, things don't look like they're gonna get any worse and if the Confederates clear up one of these backline units, that means something. Now, Stuart is not going to stop much of anything. Uh, obviously, Fitz Lee could move, but he kind of doesn't want to. He wants to organize, which means waiting. As long as he can. Is he in range one? Yeah. He makes it back. 
Uh, they, may, I, they may have, I believe they have to actually go to a station, but he's got the range to get to the station. If I don't move someone, I got it's a problem, all right? Then I've passed and the union gets to take the rest of the actions. That doesn't do me any good at all. <clears throat> but I wanna keep my reactive capabilities uh, as high as they possibly can be. I think I'm gonna move Longstreet. Am I gonna force march him? If I force march him, he's pretty fast. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is where he'd get normally. A couple more would put me to here. That doesn't really make much difference. Of course, if I roll high, um, I might have one at, and I rolled high, 11. This is not a bad place to be though. I mean, if I had the two extra movement, I'd be here, which would be useful. I guess in some ways, but here at least I'm in a position where, remember those zones of control don't do much. Uh, they do with mobile forces, but they don't block the supply, which means the Union will be able to draw supply from here as long as I'm not entrenched. However, I can draw supply from up here anyway, so that's not a big deal. All right, let's see who gets the next initiative. It's the Confederates this time. I think they're gonna force the Union to go. We wanna be able to react. I don't know what I'm going to do. Here's my thinking. I'm going to move Warren. He might be able to make an attack on Hill. Uh, for good or ill, I at least have supporting combat. Uh -oh. And probably I'm about equal at strength points. Remember, I can afford losses in a way that the uh, Confederates can't. I don't want to move Sedgwick because he's still got the opportunity to slip around the back, which is really one of the facets, especially when I'm in range of the rail line, that can allow me to get through the wilderness a little bit easier. So. Six. One, two, I can keep moving, he's covering me. Three, now I can't. Four, five, six, that's gonna put me down to a zero, I'm gonna launch the attack. So, let's see what we got. Uh, so I've got, what is it, 10 strength points to hills, 9. That's going to be a 1 to 1. It's not going to give me anything. Um, I have a supporting leader who has at least half the strength. That's plus 1. Uh... The Confederates are also at plus one because they're defending against Union infantry in the woods. And I could throw Lee in. It looks like a good idea. I don't think there's going to be another battle. So I'll throw Lee in. And that puts the Confederates at plus one. We roll. Okay, so the Confederates, uh, the Union ends up netting a plus one out of it. And on the Confederates, how big is Hill? Oh, we gotta watch, make sure the numbers, because these are core leaders. Uh, he was nine. That means he's gonna take a one. Disorganized and fatigued. So, we get this nine out of there. And if you think I don't know what I'm doing, you're probably right. Down to an eight. And now a plus one here, he was in the 10. That's also a one and a disorganized fatigued. So he goes down to a 10, uh, to a nine. And you know what we're forgetting to do is mark our losses. What's been lost? These I think are our first losses these guys were just disorganized. So, both sides have taken a casualty. And we're back on the initiative roll. It's a Union initiative. Probably make the Confederates move again. Don't know what they're gonna do. Um,
moved Stuart up into here, somewhat of a defensive position. Now the Confederates get the initiative. They're going to force the Union to go. The Union's going to move Greg, who has an extra strength point. He's hoping to dislodge Stuart. He gets 11 movement points. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11 exactly. So we go to here. Actually, we could keep going 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if we so desired. Um, this looks like a more dangerous position to be in, in terms of our supply line. So we're going to hit here. And... We have a two to one attack, which gets us a plus one. And that's probably about it. So we have a plus three advantage. The defender takes a disorder and a retreat. And the attacker plus three also gets a disorder and an advance okay there's no zone of control into here there's no road going there so i can retreat one two join him and these can advance to here which seems like a good idea he's disordered so he's fatigued who's next Confederates are going to force the Union to go again. Uh, with a good roll, Sedgwick might be able to hit Hill here. On the other hand, eh, he wants to recover, doesn't he? I don't know, you know, um, equal strength. <laughs> uh, I could fatigue a unit that could recover. Do I need my calf terribly well? Then mm, out. Cav are kind of nice because they can screen your forces as you pass by, which is kind of useful. Um, however, I don't think I really need that use right here. I'm not really sure I want. Fitz Lee in my way, however. Like if I chase him, he might end up someplace I really don't like him. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> and, you know, all these operational kind of um, that don't follow the old style I go, you go uh, type uh, setups where you get the launch attacks all over the board and everything. Things like this, things like, well, even though it's kind of, I, it's an I go, you go uh, style, the uh, uh, Zucker operational stuff. These always leave me kind of paralyzed as to the Shit, I don't know what to do. I don't understand. And I got to tell you, Korea does that to me. I'm sure Civil War did it at first. This is one I haven't played too many times. Vietnam, I'm sure the hell does. Uh, and the card-driven stuff does too. I'm just being, I'm being taxed with these hard decisions where I'm not entirely sure what I'm trying to do too much of the time. Like I don't have a really, yeah, I've, I've outlined what I think I'm supposed to do, but I don't have a really good goal for this first turn. I feel like you have to play this game more times than I play anything to kind of understand uh, the mechanism and how it translates into what your sort of smaller stage goals are at any given point. Um. So the big question for me is, do I want to send Burnside down here? I think, I think that's probably uh, what I'm going to look at. And I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to force March him. He's going to burn some railway stations as he can. So he's only got four movement points. <laughs> and he's not doing anything too impressive there. 
All right, five, so that means the Confederates win the initiative. It's not a combat roll, so it's not a casualty. And the Confederates are going to force the Union to go again. What do I want to do with Sedgwick? Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> I never seem to know. That seems to be the answer every single time for everything coming across here. I don't know. If Ewell gets out of the way, I can slam into Longstreet, and that sounds like a good thing. So I think I want to move this calf here. And we'll see if we can chase Fitz Lee around, I guess. Uh, 14 movement. Now, I could hit him from here, but I think it's more interesting to hit him from the back. One, two, three, four, five. Six, maybe. Seven, eight, nine. That means I've got five movement left. And we're at even. Terrain's not going to make a damn bit of difference. So this is just an even up fight. There's really nothing that can be added to it on either side. Union's plus three. That's a DR to a DA. Both sides are fatigued. They're already disrupted. That doesn't make a damn bit of difference. And we can retreat. Well, where do we retreat to? <laughs> Zone doesn't matter. Do I want to advance? I don't have to. I'm fatigued, so I'm not going to get anything out of it. Yeah, we'll cover the road. I don't think it makes much difference. Okay, now the Confederates have the advantage again. They're going to force the Union to move Sedgwick. Sedgwick's going to have to attack Hill, I guess. Six, one, two. Can I remember Ford's? Three, four, five, and I stop. Now you can see we're kind of set up to slam into hill pretty hard over there. And that's usually a sign of it's time for the Confederates to start withdrawing from a position. Uh, I think all the commands have moved with the exception of Ewell. So, what do I want to do with old Baldy? Well, 7 and 8 is 15. I could have 16 strength points stacked in the space. That would not be effective as long as these are all eights or higher. And they are. The reason that wouldn't be effective is because I'd have 16. These guys would be attacking at one to two. That's a minus one on the chart. Okay, there's woods, that's good, but I can find woods in a lot of places, right? And that does make up for something, but so now I'm at minus two, but there's two of these. There'd be two supporting leaders next turn to attack. I'm not going to be entrenched. I'm not going to be in a good position. Uh, however, <laughs> I'm also not sure, you know, if Hill gets to kick off. Well, I'm not going to be able to move into Hill's hex. I'm not going to have that much movement. Um, which probably means it's time to find another line. And this line down here where Greg is, the Confederate Cavalry, may be my best location. But I'm not going to force March to get to it. Um, but I do feel like the Union's kind of cut me off, and I think that's the fault of the Confederates for not having... Um, not having taken the initiatives when they had them, instead forcing the Union to go, because I was, I wanted flexibility up here. All right. So that's eight now. <laughs> There, that 
that's not very useful. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I could actually attack here if I had extra movement points, which I don't. Well, I think I'm going to go down here, which is not exactly where I want to be. But my movement point allowance says I'm not going to be able to cut back here where I kind of want to be. Um, I would have had to force march to do that. And uh, there are reasons that I can't really do that. And that is the end of this action cycle. Uh, before it completely ends, I got to unflip a lot of units. Nobody's getting a recovery, a good recovery. And we also have uh, some more cav showing up. Reminding and grousing about the Confederate situation, but honestly, it's not that bad. They can defend along this line fairly happily. Uh, might even be able to get a counterattack here against Sedgwick in the woods. So it's not that terrible a thing. You know, the weak spot is poor Longstreet doesn't have many troops. And so he's not going to be able to help any of these attacks. Uh, Hill is also disorganized. Which means he's not very strong. He only has five strength points. Which kind of weakens things. If I can hold that line for a turn, for, for an action cycle, I get breastworks and I get to recover my strength. Um, whether or not the Union wants to fight on that line is the question though. They can try to run this way, but they gotta kinda do it from the back first <laughs> or else they're going to be um, dealing with zones of control and not being able to advance um, in that direction. <sighs> There's arguments in both sides, you know. Casualties are good for the Union in general as long as both sides are getting them. All right, well, let's see. Let's do one more round. <laughs> okay, Confederates are up first. What do we want to do? Uh, if we pump Longstreet into Hill's Hacks, we have a better defensive position. And we can do that. We're not going to be stopped by the zone there. I don't think there's anything terribly big we want to do otherwise. Now the question is, do we want to take the initiative or do we want to hand it off? If we take the initiative, like I said, we can defend this line a little bit stronger, more strongly than we are. But there's a fair chance that we might get pushed off of it and then we have to react. And that's something I don't like doing. So I think I'm gonna punt <laughs> and let the Union choose. Now then the Union has to make their decision. Do we wanna attack? And if so, how, where, why? Well, Obviously, if the Union shifts down this way, the Confederate is going to, you know, try to find a defensive line to mirror me. Not right next to me necessarily, but to mirror perhaps across one of these streams. And their goal is to delay my movement. If I fight on this line, I'm already starting to commit things. I've already committed Burnsides to do something stupid. So <laughs> let's go do more stupid with him. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> we may detach <laughs> a unit. It only takes two strength points to burn things. But right now, Burnside is off screwing around. Because one thing he may want to do, I think this rail line is worth something. Yeah, that's the Virginia Central. So that's worth like a point to wreck. So I want to hit there. All right. On the mark. Confederates get the edge again. We force the Union on an action. I don't know what to do at this point. The best thing I can do is scream Sheridan down here. Got a decent movement roll. And attack fits a lady. And here I have two strength points to a half. 
That gives me four to one, which has got to be pretty good. Plus three on the table. Uh, I don't think there are any other advantages. General Lee is not going to get involved. So I'm at plus five. Plus five, I kill Fitz Lee. I killed his unit. Um, and I get an advance. I've already paid for the hex. So this goes in here. I don't have to take the advance, and I don't think I will. Uh, Fitz Lee goes back to the Cav Corps, except he goes to the Confederate Cav Corps. And this thing goes away. That is a real casualty for the Confederates. I've done something good here. <laughs> um, now, I still have four movement points left, with which I... Uh, Could get in Stuart's way. Control this crossing. One, two, three. And we'll stop there with Sheridan. And I'm pretty happy with what just happened there. For the Union. Confederates <laughs> are knocked. Because now I've slipped around behind his army. And I'm still in supply range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. wins this one. Well, we're going to make the Confederates do something. And I don't know what that's going to be. Only the problems I have right now. And I think I know what I'm doing. Stuart and whoever else is down under there. Hampton. Um, I could run them someplace. It doesn't really help me. The biggie here is the infantry. The Cav can run around and do some stuff, but its main purpose is a support role. Um, unless I could clear, say, Sheridan out of the way, this isn't very helpful. Now, attacking Sheridan seems like a bad idea. I'd be at penalties. Uh, so, the next option is, well, if I try to move Hill, he could chase Sheridan away. Then I'm giving up this line. I'm paying more movement to head down this way to the next line down. And the Union is going to be able to choose their moves as they like. And on top of that, Hill's not in the healthiest shape possible. So, yeah, I mean, he'll, he's still strong enough to share, scare Sherrod in a way, I think. But it just doesn't seem like an optimal move to me. Um, I get Yule out of here, and bad things happen. I pass, and the Union can do what it likes. It could slip down this way and come around, and now I can't stop them, and they've gotten behind me, and that's terrible. <laughs> okay, so that's probably the worst thing I can do. Longstreet, I could slide him up the hill and say I'm going to stand on this line. And as of right now... The Union doesn't have enough force to prevent me from getting supplies back that way. But I do that, and maybe the Union pulls away. They're not going to get behind me as easily because now I can pull away too, right? But it means Longstreet's not going to be exactly where I want him, but he's not going to be anyway, right? Um, another option is I could attack with Yule, hit Sedgwick, probably delay the back end of the Union line from being able to move, but then I only have like one, I only have Hill uh, to activate. The thing I'd most like to have is for the fight to happen along this line and it to stand. The only way I think I can do that is Longstreet. So we're going to move him. And we get tons of movement, 11 movement points. Unfortunately, Longstreet is not very strong. That's a one to two. It's like one to three, one to three. Yuck. Uh, well, I may have enough movement that I want to 
chase Sheridan away and start setting up on this line. Six. I haven't made my attack yet. This is when Sheridan has to decide he's withdrawing. He's going to. Because, I don't know, there's no supporting leader. These are both too weak. Two to one. Uh, Confederate infantry attacking in the woods, but not not Union Infantry defending. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't want Sheridan to get killed. So, yeah, I'm going to give up that space, I guess. Though I had to fight kind of for it. <laughs> Which means we hunt down the cavalry tree yeah, I know we did it, but I don't remember it ever. Uh, what is it? Flip the calf to its fatigued side, it's already there. Disorder it. Ooh. It means he's not gonna be in good order next turn. That kinda sucks. Uh, two movement points for the attacker, as if he were actually attacking. The calf rolls a die. On a six, something bad happens. Nothing bad happens. And now he gets a route for hexes. Where do I want to be? Well, oh, uh, this is all minor ri minor river here, so I got to be careful. This bridge becomes very important if the Confederates can get forces up there. And they don't really have reinforcements streaming up yet. If they can get forces up to this bridge, that would cut my supply, and I'd have to take it in this direction, which you know, right now I can do, but that's not guaranteed in the in the long term. Ah, if he clears out, am I in range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm just out of range for the good supply from the rail line, I think. I think I'm okay right now with that retreat. Um, so now Longstreet still has three movement points. Well, let's chase more cap. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have enough points to attack here. Does Greg want to retreat anyway is the question. Um, he's kind of holding a nice location right now. A four hex retreat would put him someplace much, much worse. So I'm going to hold that position because what we don't want is for like Stuart or something to start streaming around and cutting my supply here. Can he do it anyway? Yeah, maybe, but he's not going to be building breastworks or anything in the near future. So yeah, we should be okay. <laughs> That's long street. Now what? And yeah, I know this is going to go over an hour, but it is funny. Confederates get to force an, an action. They're going to do it on the Union again. And it looks to me like Wilson is the one who needs to move. Uh, eh, I can't move Wilson because I want to reorganize him. <laughs> Shit. How's Greg? Greg needs to reorganize too. Uh, all right, so I guess it's time to pay the piper one way or another. Fight or not fight? Let me think. Oh yeah, the terrain doesn't favor fighting. Um, There are no roads going into Hill's Hex from these two. That means it's going to cost six, seven, eight moving points to launch an attack. I'm going to activate Sedgwick. If I get a four, and I'm not going to force march because that disorganized me, it makes combat harder. If I get a four or higher, I'm going to attack because causing casualties is what the Union wants to do. 
or it's a part of what they want to do. Are you sure they want to gain ground? Probably more than that, but um, destroying the Confederate army in front of them is very, very helpful. I only get five movement points, so we're going to slip around the back. defines what the turn's going to look like now. Tied, Confederates go. We're going to force the Union to go. That means Hancock's going to take a move. Is Warren going to sit back and recover is the question. Six. Three, four, five, six. Make it here to Spotsylvania Courthouse, which is sort of the goal of the scenario, so... The Union's kind of done its job. Yeah, of the first turn, of the uh, one turn scenario for Confederates get to go again. Uh, do something with Warren or do not, or Wilson. The Union is going to pass, which means the Confederacy gets to roll some dice and see if they can fall back somewhere useful. Now that's an interesting call, because Hill probably needs to recuperate. And I don't know what to do in that case, because I really don't want the Union getting back here. That's the horrible situation. So I may, geez, I can't force March with Hill. Um, This is so hard always. Yeah, let me think. Right, let's see what you all would get. If he gets a five, nine, move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yule's not gonna get enough movement points to be able to put himself in a really, really dangerous position. So If I get to here, that puts my zones across. And Hancock, see I'm no longer getting the river line, but here's the thing. So this is where I need to take to defend. I need that space, and that's really it. Um, if I could push Sheridan, that would be cool. Ewell has, he would have Five, uh, five strength points, if I can get that to you. Against Sheridan, who has one. That's quite a few. So he's uh, Sheridan would have to run. Now, Sheridan could run back up this way, so I'm not going to trap him. Nothing exciting is going to happen. Uh, I am not going to force March. I only get five movement points. Oops. One, two, three, four down to Long Street. Yeah, those calves could retreat if they wanted to, but they don't. <sighs> Do I need to be with Long Street? Is he just in too much danger on his own? Or can I squeeze out an extra movement point? And if so, in which direction? Because this direction is kind of interesting, but it's the wrong way. Uh, I think I need the extra mobile point heading to try to cover Richmond. Uh, actually, I actually think the Union's just done. So... Now, does Hill want to recover is the question. I had to move Ewell first. I think I need to move Hill as well and not recover him. And that's nine movement points for him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sheridan. 
might want to retreat just to get out of a scary location. Uh, Sheridan projects a zone of control there, I believe. I think anything projects one. It's just uh, along a road. It's just if you're yeah, three or less exerts the zone of control. So I'll come uh, on a secondary zone. So at seven out of nine, I'm on the two that that markers in the right place. Uh, if I withdraw, hill's not going anywhere. If I stand, Hill's not going anywhere. I think I'm okay standing. I can always withdraw if Hill gets activated next to me. And that is almost all the Confederates. Now, what it isn't is it isn't the two Kev, but they're going to be recovering and entrenching for whatever reason. So we'll take care of that, and then we'll come to the, uh, the end of turn stuff. The valley cycle and terminal cycles that we have to take care of. I haven't seen this before. This is... He recovers and drops breastworks on himself. He's able to do both because he's not fatigued. He could build a, tra a bridge, except there's nothing to bridge. Same thing with Hancock here. Recovers and builds some absolutely useless breastworks that I do not need. But that's okay. Who knows, you know? Um, same thing. Okay. Stuart. Uh, attachments down here. I wanted to make sure that it was a per turn thing because Stuart may want to get Hampton into his force. But he doesn't do that right now. You can't do that between action cycles. That's a big deal. You can't gather your your core together. I think, uh, oh, Greg, this could actually mean something. Him not having moved. And now everybody else flips over from their fatigued sides. Let's see what happens in the valley cycle. Uh, it looks to me like it's a simple die roll. Forming the most action there. I roll a six. That creates a minus one on the valley. That I think is a problem. <laughs> okay, so we've hit the Union Initiative right away. Confederates have two choices. Give up their troops real early in the game. Um. Four manpower, but I think I can take this from back here. Or five victory points. I'm going to commit the four manpower. We put General Grant here in the valley to just indicate that that's there. This is going to be a significant hit, though, against the Confederates. Uh, the terminal phase, debarkation, none of that, complete railroad destruction, nobody was doing any railroad destruction. Union supply base. The Union gets... The bases we have on the map are already fully constructed, uh, but we get to build a new one, and I bet I have these on the wrong side, because they pooch. The garrison should be good enough, I'll fix that one. Um, I want a supply base somewhere down here on this river. And seems to me this one looks like a good choice. And we'll start building that, and that gives me the opportunity to slide over this way a little bit more um, in order to protect that base and to move my depots into that location. But that'll be in the administrative phase that I make that choice right now. I'm perfectly good. I'm covered with the supply line. 
everything looks like it's going fine. And I'm expecting the Confederates will be far enough down once they uh, send Burnside heading back to the main of the Army of the Potomac. Right? I think. Uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Uh, that puts us to turn two. And so that's May 8th, and we'll load this one up.